Okay, in this video, we're gonna be doing Calc AB problem set 114. The problems and a playlist are in the description below. Let's see it. We wanna evaluate the integral of x cubed plus three x minus five over x squared plus four dx. So the numerator has to be a, I mean, it has to be a proper fraction. Here we have the numerator has a higher degree than the denominator. We're gonna do division and then we will deal with what we get. So set up our division. Uh, I like to put in placeholders for everything that's missing. So it's like x squared zero x plus four. And then also I put in a placeholder for x squared. I find that it makes everything kind of line up, especially if the problem gets you know gross. So uh, I always do that. What do I need to multiply x squared by to get x cubed is x. And then we multiply it out. So x cubed. 0x squared, 4x, we're gonna put parentheses and subtract. So we're gonna just get negative 4x, uh, negative x rather, and then uh, bring down the negative five. That's already a lower degree than x squared plus four, so we're done with division, which is nice. So our integral becomes this. So it's x and then plus our remainder over our quotient, quotient, divisor, dividend, divisor, divisor, I don't know denominator. Um, okay, so we got to integrate this. I like lost the word there for a second. Actually, I still have lost it. I'm not sure what the right word is right now. Integral of x is one half x squared. Uh, I'm going to break this up into two separate integrals. So I'm going to say minus the integral of x over x squared plus four dx. And then uh, also minus five, the integral of one over, and I'm rearranging it because that's an arctan. So four over one over four plus x squared dx. All right, so uh, for this second integral here, uh, you look at it and you're like, if the denominator is x squared plus four, the numerator, uh, or du, sorry. If u is equal to x squared plus four, then du would be two x dx. There should be a two in the numerator, so I'm gonna put a two up there and then balance it out with um, a one half on the outside, and then it's perfect, so it'll be negative one half, natural log, absolute value, x squared plus four. You don't actually need the absolute value there because x squared plus four is always positive, but it's safest to put it in. Um, now, what are we gonna do this second integral that we see? I'm gonna factor a four out of the denominator. So I'm gonna have minus five fourths, and then it'll be one over one plus, and I'll make this the quantity x over two squared dx. So hopefully you've integrated a bunch of things at this point, which is why I'm kind of feeling comfortable skipping a couple steps. Uh, in this case, there should be a one half in the numerator by the chain rule. So I'm gonna put that in and balance it with a times two on the outside. And then that's a perfect arctan. So we'll have our one half x squared, but minus one half natural log. I'm gonna put the absolute value of x squared plus four and then minus five halves. This is a perfect arctan of uh, x over two and then plus c, that's our problem. All right, let's take a look at the next one. So that is an algebraic thing you might need to do. Division before you integrate. This one also looks like an algebraic thing you'd have to do because initially you might think u is the denominator, right? u is x squared plus 8x plus 41, but then du is gonna be 2x plus eight and we don't have any of that. That means that since it's quadratic in the denominator, this is almost certainly arctan. We just have to complete the square, which is the other algebraic technique that you really need to know. So uh, division of polynomials and completing the square, that can come up for sure. All right, so we're gonna take the coefficient of x, which is eight, divide it by two to get four, square it, add it, and subtract it. And then uh, the first three things there are a perfect square trinomial. That's like the whole point. So x plus four squared, and then just combine your 41 and negative 16 to get 25. Uh, just like in the last one, I need to factor 25 out of everything in the denominator. And also I'm gonna say x plus four squared over 25 is the quantity x plus four over five squared. And I'm gonna rewrite it because I like to write things, um, I like my arctan to always be one over one plus u squared. 100% of the time, that's what I want. Okay, so this, by the chain rule, should have had a one fifth in the numerator. So I'll put that, I will balance it with a times five uh, on the outside. And then uh, that's one fifth and a perfect arctan of u, so arctan of quantity x plus four over five. All right, so those are the two algebraic things that can definitely come up that you really need. Like if you were gonna go over any like algebraic things at the last minute, like those would be the two things I would say for sure. All right, given that f and g are differentiable and the line tangent to f at x equals four is y equals negative six x plus 23 and tangent at 
to g at x equals 4 is y equals 3x minus 7. We want to evaluate the limit as x approaches 4, g of x squared minus 25 over f of x plus 1. All right. Well, we have the tangent line, so we like sort of implicitly know the value of the function and the derivative at that point. So at x equals 4, I know that f of 4 will be the tangent line value, which will be negative 1. I know the slope of the tangent is f prime of 4. So we actually know f of 4 and f prime of 4. Same for g, right? At x equals 4, uh, we're going to get g of 4 is 12 minus 7, so 5, and g prime should be 3. So that's useful information, but it's not obvious. So now I need to justify um, the limit. So like you look at this and you're like, well, I, ideally I would just plug in, right? And you would get uh, g of four, which is five. So 25 squared, I'm uh, sorry, five squared is 25 minus 25 is zero. And then uh, f of four is negative one. So you get negative one plus one, that's zero. This is a Lobethal's problem. So what I need to do is I need to like get to the point where I can use it. So I need to establish the limit as x approaches 4 of f of x and the limit as x approaches 4 of g of x. And I'm going to do that by using differentiability implies continuity and then the definition of continuity. So first we will say f and g are differentiable, therefore, or implies that f and g are continuous. Once I know that's true, I then know that the limit as x approaches 4 of f of x is equal to f of 4 because that's the definition of continuity. Um, so that'll be negative 1. Same thing for g. The limit as x approaches 4 of g of x is g of 4, which is 5. So if you are not told the limits, uh, you basically need to do this. So like for problems where it's not like straight algebra subbing in, uh, you need to kind of establish your limits. And we've done that. So now what we can do is do the actual L'Hopital setup. So the limit as x approaches 4 of the numerator equals the limit as x approaches 4 of the denominator equals 0. Therefore, by L'Hopital's limit is, and now we apply L'Hopital's. So we're gonna get two uh, g of x, g prime of x over f prime of x. And now we try to sub in uh, and we're gonna get, just sub in the values that we found. So it's two and five and three over negative uh, six, which simplifies down to just negative five. So that's a, a classic L'Hopital's problem where it's not just subbing in doing the algebra stuff you got to do a little bit of writing all right let's look at one more find the average value of f of x equals x squared plus cosine of pi x on the interval from one to three all right so average value is integral divided by interval so i'm going to write that down integral from one to three of our function over three minus one three minus one is one is two and it's in the denominator so one half and now we're going to integrate so I'm gonna get a one third x cubed, and then I'm gonna get, uh, there should be a pi in there by the chain rule, so one over pi and then sine of pi x. And we are going from uh, one to three. So just don't lose the one half, and, and you should get this right, one half. All right, so I'm gonna set, start another, so one half times everything. I'm gonna start another set of parentheses for when I plug in three, and then another set of parentheses for when I plug in one. I think it's a good habit to get into. So parenthesis, plug in three, we get nine plus, the sine of three pi is zero, so that's just zero, minus uh, one, minus quantity, and then one third, the sine of pi is also zero, so uh, minus one third, so this will be one half, and then 26 over three, which is 13 over three, and there you go. That's the whole problem set. I hope this was helpful, and good luck.